Philippe Roger here, co-owner of ProPlay Games. Here at PPG, we're constantly doing stuff to try to bring you more content and bring you more DBS deck techs and more coverage for you. And we're happy to announce our affiliation with dbsdecks.com. DBS Decks, the guys over there, Mark specifically, are working very hard to compile a list of all the top decks from all of the events across the nation. And there, you can see even cards played on a percentage base within the archetype. So it's a great, great website. We encourage you to go and use that. Uh, so go ahead and check it out, dbs-dex.com, and check out Pro Play Games for all your DBS needs. Stay pro. Last round, round seven, and I lied. I'm sorry, guys. We don't get Peter on this match. This match is Marcel Russell. Don't don't give me a lip. Don't give I, me a lip. I trusted in you. I, I thought, tried. I tried. I went out there. I was told no. This is what we're doing. I so, thought you were master persuader. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I didn't even get to talk to Peter. I was like, Peter, you lucky because Marcel and Justin Rios are on dreams. That's so a it great is, matchup. So we're going to go over the to them. We're, it's a mirror. It's and the Goku mirror. It's going to be insane. So let's go over to uh, the match. See if they are ready. And uh, they are playing the red Goku deck. The red Goku Mecha Frieza deck. And uh, as we saw before, Justin played it and he lost to David Rodriguez, another player from Team PPG. But he was playing the green Mecha Frieza with Universe Sixes, uh, Kaba, Kale, and Khalifa. So we got a Battle of the Giants here. Justin Real, Pro Tour competitor, and multiple regional top 16s. And we got Marcel Russell, Las Vegas regional champion. Both playing Mecha Freezer Red. So, game one here, round seven of seven, last round of Swiss, and it looks like both of these players are on their winning in. Let's see. I mean, they were at table uh, table nine, I think. Okay. So, they were at table nine. So, this is a bubble match. This is the bubble. This is a rubber match between oh, match. two PPG players, seeing if they make it to top 16, and uh, nothing, nobody better than. Uh, Mecha Frieza Red. Both Mecha Frieza Reds. Yeah, both players playing the exact same thing. The Mecha Frieza Goku, as I like to call it, Super Saiyan 4 Mecha Turbo. <laughs> That's my phrase for it. So SSJ4 Mecha Turbo. I do like Super Saiyan 4 Mecha Frieza. Mecha that Turbo! Cool. They're both cool. super fast. That sounds cool. Mecha Turbo. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so we see a uh, pint sized warrior from Justin. And we have a Marcel Russell up on his first Is that turn. double Monaka plan or double Monaka double planet Vegeta first turn awaken Jesus. from from Justin? No, from Marcel. Justin's got it. Too. Oh, sorry, sorry, Justin, Justin, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Marcel currently at six. I did not even see that. Yup. So he's gonna grand tour. Marcel's grand touring into the determined Super Saiyan Son Goku. Same name as the Determined Super Saiyan Son Gohan promo, which so, I found pretty funny. Really? Yeah, both of them are crit, too. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. Well, this is a pretty good start for, uh, well, not as good as Justin, but Justin had a fantastic start. We got Marcel off with one of the, one of the very important combo pieces. This uh, Determined Super Saiyan is going to allow Marcel to EX evolve. Much earlier than you're actually supposed to EX evolve. Yeah. Usually EX evolve is over an energy cost of five or more, but this determined Super Saiyan is determined oh my to God. be a <gasps> really five really creature. Much it's determined when at four life or less. So a very good way in to cheat out that EX ability on many of the Sun Gokus from the set. Actually, I think there's like four or five different Gokus that have the EX evolve text on them. So, uh, not only in this deck can be played, but it can be abused in, in many other decks uh, and many other colors. So you can combine blue with this, you can combine uh, red, you can combine even green. So here um, comes the Awaken, though. Uh, Marcel getting a lot of extra cards in his hand, though. A lot of extra cards in his hand. Yeah, Monaco, we see double Monaco. Still with Monaco, Monaco, Bloodlust, Bloodlust. Uh, Bloodlust fantastic in this matchup, but the Monacas... They're not any good anymore, so he's going to have to find a way to charge them or get them out of his hand, uh, but at least he has the Trunks, which he played. That lets him cycle through a little bit more. 
This is an interesting matchup because I we can't really call this a mirror because I know Marcel's deck and I know Justin's deck. They're playing very, very different techs. Uh, Marcel, Marcel and I developed a lot of this deck. He's made his own slight changes to it, of course, uh, but the, the principle behind the deck is still the same. Uh, I'm not sure if Justin's actually running because we oh we do have a deck list. Give me. Ooh, me yes, I have Marcel Russell's, which I didn't get to take a look at first. Uh, you obviously know it, but I don't, and this is I love it. pretty, I love pretty it. standard. No, uh, it's it's. There's a lot of things in that deck that people don't run. The thing uh, is, bad ring lasers are in the sideboard, so that's something spicy there. But everything else in the main deck seems. So he did opt to put that in there. I was main decking it. Um, there's a lot of little options in the deck that Marcel likes to throw in. Um, also, a note: eight, ten. 11 cards in Marcel's sideboard. Why does Marcel keep doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Marcel's sideboard in Richmond. <laughs> 10 cards, and then the 5 Ginyu Force. I don't get it. I mean, I'm more upset that he didn't put the Ginyu Force in his side deck. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. But we're seeing Justin has two Grand Tours in his energy. Uh, I see a Bloodlust, and then I see a whole lot of Goku chilling in Justin's hand. He really likes charging that Grand, that grand Tour. I, I don't you know. You really only need one. You really yeah. only need to use one. But he, did he play one? No. We Shugesh into the Goku. He might go off this turn. Yep, he might just kill him. Marcel with the Bloodlust. Marcel, yeah, Bloodlust. Probably should have Bloodlust the Shugesh, to be honest. Maybe he wants Justin to commit. Maybe he wants to be like, maybe he wants to fill out what Justin has. He wants to be like, oh, Justin didn't have it. Okay, so, I mean, Mar Justin's probably like, oh, Marcel didn't have it, Bloodlust, or else he would have Bloodlust as the Shigash. And now puts Marcel on better have cold Bloodlust. And I can't imagine Marcel not playing Bloodlust here. Uh, he has to. He has to. And Justin's not main deck in Bad Ring, so that's going to certainly go through. Obviously, Marcel these deck lists, uh, un unbeknownst to, to both players, I, I think we'll give them to top 16, right? Or no? Maybe. Oh, actually? It's your call. No, probably no. It's no. your call, it's, it's usually on ARGs that you want to give uh, access to deck lists to both players because you have a whole night to actually look at VODs and be like, I'm going to play around this, this, and this because I kind of know his deck list. Uh, here, not so much. I mean, we're doing the whole event in one day. So we definitely have, they don't have enough time between rounds. They're just playing, playing, playing. Even us, we've just been in and out of the stream room. Haven't had too much time to do much, but. We literally uh, ended that round, last round, yeah. as they were posing the pairings for round seven. It was a very grindy matchup. Mecha Ape versus Mecha Ape. It was just a savage beatdown. The a battle monkeys. of the giant monkey. All right. We got King Kong versus King Kong. Time <laughs> troll coming out. I think time troll super stable in yeah, this deck. Yeah, no, of course. I just, I'm surprised at the lack of time control that I've been seeing. It's definitely like, there's a lot riding on this match. The winner will potentially bubble in, the loser is out of the tournament. Yep. So and it's like. Two excellent players that will be missing Top Gun. And that goes to show the competitiveness of the tournament today. Over 100 players, all the best players in the world. Florida known to be very, very, very strong in Dragon Ball Super. Uh, so one of the biggest states for the game. Uh, really hope that another regional visits our state because that last one was really good. Um, not as good as it could have been because I feel like it was an early stage of the game. And I feel like the game has just been growing and growing and growing and it hasn't really let up. So uh, really interesting to see, you know, a future attendances grow. Hopefully not limited by a cap. Uh, ARG, I know, has been limiting some events because of cap space, because of other games being ran with them. So, we'll see what to expect from a Bandai in the future. I really can't wait for the new regional season to be announced. God, we're doing seasons now? Uh, of course, everything has a season. You right? Justin, going down. The two... Both players at two life now. <laughs> Oi. It's a lot of combo pans. See, I don't like the one drop pan, by the way. I really? don't like it. I hate it. I hate it. 
of it. Having to play that card just to get the plus one off of it when comboing to me is not worth it. I just don't like. I on the other side don't like the combination attack pan. I it's like free. The, I like the rushing warrior pan. Well, I mean technically, I think the rushing warrior pan would be more free than the combination attack pan because you're actually like replacing it. Himself. I guess teams are on. Wait, does the combination when you put it on a dual attacker, it keeps the well, boosts keeps always attack? carry over. I'm saying, is it just for the battle, or is it for the whole turn? Turn. Okay. That's a little bit better. But combination attack pain is literally free. If you have a battle card with 25 or k or 25k or more, you play it for free. So okay. you dump, like, multiples of them to give 5k to a card that stays on the card until the end of the turn. Okay. And on top of that, worst case scenario, you get a 5k combo piece as well. Justin going out to one life now. Feeling ballsy. By the way... It's just turn two. <laughs> turn two, and the cards are flying. And you see a Ooh. explosive suggestion combo. See what Marcel has here. One thing that I find so amusing is how Marcel holds his cards. He just like never shuffles them between each other. He just like carefully looks at them. Always keeps them in the same order. He puts them in like an order in his hand. And just always keeps it in that same order. Just no hand shuffle whatsoever. Which is really... Really unique to say the least. <laughs> oh god, it just kills me how quick this deck is. Like, it yeah. legitimately bothers me. Yeah. Is, you know what this reminds me of? Wind up format. Yeah, no, this is definitely Yu Gi Oh for sure. Oh, well, the closest to, to Yu Gi Oh. But... Like, it's literally wind up format, it's just that fast. Taking a life here, Marcel Russell down to one. Now let's see if Justin has enough to pump through on one more attack. Looks like he does. I see Bean. I see double Bean. But, you see, the problem with this deck is that he can't play the Bean. He can't play Bean now because he hasn't charged any blue energy. And he's going to get rid of this Cobla look because it's dead. And his combo cards are going to go away. And he's gonna play a worship, rushing warrior pen. Another one drops. See, this is like, again, turn two. Turn yeah, two. No, turn two, he's going in. Marcel has one energy right now because he hasn't had his turn two yet. And this is where we're at in this game. <laughs> it's so insane. And Justin has a 25k, right? That keeps gaining attack based on the number of attacks. So he's gonna attack with time patrol trunks, trigger the sun, uh, Super Saiyan 3 Sun Goku. Gain 5,000, then attack with the Russian Warrior Pen, then gain another 5,000 from that attack, and then he's going to attack with the Sudden Goku, triggering the ability, going to 40k, triple strike, and he's going to use the Russian Warrior Pen to draw another card. Looks like we're going to see a block here. Yep, good play. Limit with the potential of that huge hit. There's one pan left on the board, so there's another attack. Let's swing in. He can't kill here, it's gonna probably be over. Oof. Wait, wh why did the pan go to the graveyard? They drop in. Ooh, Marcel taking the damage. Yep. So Justin Rios are coming out with a turn to kill, ladies and gentlemen. You saw it here first. Well, maybe not first. Maybe first. Depends if ARG has showcased it. Not sure. But first time here on our stream. No, the turn to kill. Oh, it's on live yeah. stream. So that is the first time. Turn two kill gets featured here at PBG, and we can see where the issues arise here. I really hope that Bandai sees this. Marcel wasn't even able to play his second energy, man. Oh. And it, they're playing the same deck. Yeah. And he had bloodlust. He had bloodlust. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Like, what do you, like, 
what do you do? It's literally like I, I said it was like wind up format because wind up format for those of you who don't know, like the player who went first would make it so they have a full board and you have zero cards in hand before you can even play your first card. And that's it just I'm getting flashbacks. I'm getting, I'm getting flashbacks. Funny, Why not Hunter like, bring out two bolts? Just shark, shark, overlay, magician, tap, going to. Uh. That was actually the format that I topped my first YCS in. Uh, I, I really love that format, actually. It was like dinos, rescue rabbit. I mean, at least it was a triangle format. But there was a point where windups was like strictly just like the deck. Uh, but this it was, was right for it was right for the uh, Dino okay. Rabbit format. So Dino Rabbit's made it a little bit better, but um, Windups was around for like, and then got like little hits, little hits, little bit, beaters. But uh, we're gonna make Magician to one. We're gonna exactly. well, first thing that happens, they ban Hunter. Just, slowly Hunter just taking away your toys, you know, because it was a little toy deck. So uh, really funny, but once again, um, just stressing the importance of Mecha Frieza needing to go. I think it's uh, overdue its stay, unfortunately. It, it happens, it happens with card games. It's not no flaw in, you know, Bandai's uh, card mechanic or card design. It's just something that sometimes if you make new cards, you, it just spirals out of control to the point where you just need to be like, okay, let's cut this off and like, let's make it a little bit more refreshing because sure, Aratus may fix the problem, but if that Arata doesn't fix the problem, what does it say about your company? What does it say about the game and your R&D and your research department and, you know, anybody else that they have uh, making decisions for them? So the R&D like department needs to sit down and listen to what players are saying on Octagon or at least play on Octagon against some of the no, people. Oh, yeah, and, and definitely I think PBG has great uh, hold in that because we do have players and we do have a large team that plays as these things ahead of time. And I feel like that would be a very good asset for Bandai, especially when they don't have resources or if they don't have the resources or they can maybe use some complimentary, you know, opinions on, you know, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Before things are spoiled or things are finally put into the design phase where they're like, all right, let's print it and stuff like that. It's, it's something that a lot of different, re they could use a lot of different resources and they are available. And, um, you know, I definitely hope that they do open up that door of possibility. Uh, to us at Pro Begins, we just have such a huge team and hug a bunch of dedicated guys to the game that can actually test these things before they become a problem because a lot of these things can be avoided. But hopefully Bandai seeing it firsthand that this is something that definitely needs addressing and I hope that something is done about it. And like I said, I think the safest thing to go about it is just banning and just being like, okay, well, we made a card. When we made it, it wasn't a problem. No, but it was a problem from day one. <laughs> you can't even say that because it won that first regional. That it, it did was win out. that first regional, but then a starter Goku, you know, entered the scene. And then Vegeta was a counter to it. Uh, starter Goku was, you know, a counter to it too. So it wasn't as bad, you know, but now you have a new set. You have 200, 200 plus cards, you know, that you can just be like, okay, which one of these make Mecha Freeze is so insane, you know? And then that's what we ended up doing. And then you see that uh, coming into fruition here. So... Uh, it looks like, are they ready for game two yet? It looks like they might be uh, still sideboarding, still shuffling up. So um, I, I just hope like, you know, uh, something gets done about this because it's not, it's not fun, you know, especially, and, and he was playing against a Mega Freezer deck. It's not like he was playing against like a, you know, Ring Game Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. This was either two high caliber players have a, a track record of topping, of winning regionals, and and they know the deck very well. I mean, this is the first week that it's out, but they've been testing it. Like you said, Octagon untapped. There's a way, a bunch of ways to play test these things, especially if you're giving the information exclusively. Put them under an NDA, non-disclosure agreement. Pick a, a select few team, um, you know, make a contract, and, you know, just test these things out before they actually get spoiled. Uh, Magic does it. You know, I was Magic, about to say, I don't know Ma what Magic, Magic does. Yeah, I was about yeah. to ask. Magic does that. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh does it, which is why you see their balance come out and then there's an OTK, there's an MTK after their balance. It's like- That just happened. Are you just like throwing darts at a, at a, <laughs> at a board and just be like- Yu-Gi-Oh's also notorious for it? super irrelevant ban lists. Yeah, some, so, I mean like the, uh, most of their logic doesn't make sense and I don't want it to be compared to Konami because that's probably the worst similarity that you can make. But it looks like our players are ready for game two and we're gonna see how they attack this. I can only assume that Marcel Russell goes in with the battering lasers, I puts mean, those into the main board. We're gonna see the flying nemesis go in. Mafuba's probably from Marcel as well. Uh, Mafuba, yeah. Flying nemesis and Mafuba are probably gonna be the, the cards that go in uh, into Justin's side deck. The question is what he takes out. Probably the fourth Blood Us too, because Blood Us is so good against Sugesh. Well, that's the only thing to do against Sugesh. You have yeah. literally no other options unless you just wanna lose your card or if you wanna try and push into it. 
uh, the question is going to be, and the thing that kills me most, most about what Bandai said is they said that that turn to kill isn't consistent. Le we had it on, you know, we didn't, we had Justin on earlier and he wasn't able to do it. Yes. But literally first game. Yeah. Immediately nailed it. Cool. I'd say it's probably about 50, 50 shot, whether or not you can hit it or not. And you have to have, you don't even have to have the right setup. It's a problem. You just need two energy. Yeah. You just need two energy. Um, now the question really being Marcel going first or second, and I would like to believe he's going to go second. Uh, apparently I'm wrong. He's going to opt to go first. And he's going to start off with Grand Tour. So he's going to go ahead and charge a red energy, go into Grand Tour, bring himself down to seven. We saw the Monaka in his hands. That's going to probably be his next play. So he's going to bring out Pint Size to search a, a Goku. Top seven for a GT Goku. It's just the deck is insane. Yep. It's, I wouldn't say it's, you know, solitary. Yeah, I don't think it's solitary. Honestly, it's not like a deck that anybody can pick up and just win with. It is a difficult deck to play. But like... Well, you gotta know when to do the push and yeah. when not to do the push. And but it's only a matter of time before everybody gets it. Like, they're gonna see the stream. They're gonna play back. They're gonna be like, okay, what did he do? You know, obviously, this is how you get better in games, obviously. But... It's still something that, you know, as a new player and I'm playing this game and then I get turn two'd, I feel like immediately just quitting the game. And just being like, I'm going to go back to Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon or Magic or, you know, games that, you know, I played before playing this. Because a lot of these guys, they played other card games before playing Dragon Ball. And then they're like, okay, Dragon Ball seems cool, refreshing, new, fair. You know, and I feel like this is something that kind of like crosses this. the fair line. Just, With the, just a little bit. the I mean, cross worlds. The crossing the worlds of fairness. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. you got me on that See, one. You I punned. Are you happy? I punned you. You, you counterpunned me. And now I will it never forgive you. It took me until round seven to, before I got a pun and finally. I will never forgive you. Yeah, you love me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's not even about like babysitting players too. This is just something that you just want to nip in the butt. I mean, it's not something that... I don't feel like the general public should be, you know, it shouldn't be like every public outcry, Bandai has to do something about it. But this, feel like this is different. Yeah, I feel like Bandai should just be like, hey guys, that have a proven track record and are professional and, you know, play this game, you know, 24-7. Like, what do you think about this before it gets, becomes a problem? Like, literally, it's all not, you have it's to do. It's not even like about babysitting and being like, oh, what do you want to do? What do you like? It's not about what we like. It's what... We play other games. We see what makes Yu-Gi-Oh! a terrible card game. We know what makes Magic a terrible card game. And we know what makes Pokemon a terrible card game. Every game has its flaws. And I know what makes Vanguard a terrible card yeah, game. Because exactly. it's the only one I didn't mention. Because I'm the only person in the world that still plays it. <laughs> no, I, I just, don't play it anymore. Speaking of Vanguard, we are actually vending the Spring Fest up in Atlanta. We have some Ooh. employees up there. Which has also made it pretty hard on us this week. We've had employees all over vending big events. And we're actually vending a Pokemon regional not too uh, far from now, too. So we are active supporters of all these games. It's just uh, we love Dragon Ball so much more because of the uniqueness that it brings. And I feel like that uniqueness going away is just what is going to hurt the game. Especially if, you know, Bandai doesn't keep it consistent on listening to the players and seeing exactly um, how things are resolved and, and See, even feelings against things. It's really know? funny. Like, you talk about public outcry, and that's exactly what killed Naruto. Because... The ban list for Naruto was literally done because of what people are trying to do with this right now. Now, there is a difference. Um, I have hours and hours and hours of odds of me playing this deck and me walking through people with this deck. So literally, when there is video proof of what this deck does, and I will send it all to Bandai if I have to, there is a difference. I have never had a public outcry for Like, I'm personally never like, that card needs to get banned, that card needs to get banned. Now, I do talk, you know, smack here and there about certain cards, i.e. Vegeta. You know, you'll hear me say certain things like, from the beginning, I was like, Mecha Freeze is a bad card. Vegeta is a bad card. Do I actually believe those cards are terrible cards? No. Do I believe they're bad for the game? Yes. So therein lies the difference between when I say cards bad. I'm not saying that the cards, you know, miserable, don't play it, you know, it's a horrible card, it's a piece of crap. I'm saying it's bad for the game. Um... And yeah, I mean, uh, also, uh, not to, to, to add on to that point, I'm not saying that every, like, top three of the games are terrible. They just have all their terrible aspects or uh, terrible parts to it. Um, you know, obviously, some are more terrible than others. Um, not to say that, obviously, Dragon Ball doesn't have its terrible parts. Uh, not as a whole, or else any of these games wouldn't be existing, obviously, in this 
day and age, but you still have all three games, um, you know, healthy and alive, but not as alive as they used to be at one point. I feel like Dragon Ball is just taking that and uh, just running with it because it's just taking advantage of all these other games slipping up and not being able to attend to its players. I mean, you can't really say much more terrible thing about Konami when you make a ban list and then there's an FDK the next day. You know, you can't say much more terrible about Magic when you go and you make these huge sets and then there's no hype for them and no excitement for them. And then people start stop playing format indefinitely and start playing older card. You know, like there's everything, there's something about every game sometimes that you're just like, okay, like this is terrible. But not to say that it's terrible, stop playing the game, play this game, you know. But obviously, there's things that you can do and things that you don't do and things that you want to avoid to get some like negative rep out of your game. So, um, like I said, this is just one of them for Ben. And there's not going to be the first time. It's not going to be the first time and not going to be the last time. But um, it's a, definitely a learning experience. And I think it's um, something that will be fixed. But there is a few decks out there that I saw on the top tables. Mass Sin. There's like four or five of them in like the top like six, seven tables. And table one. Table one. Cool. Yeah. Table one was table Mass Sin Mirror Match. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's, you got to remember too, it's all about climb. It's all about who you play against. It's all about what matchups you played against. But at the end of the day, you're, you're correct. Uh, when we get the top 16, we'll of course tell you guys on stream what it is. Uh, we're still going to be streaming the top 16. And uh, it's it's really going to be interesting. I'm really I'm really quite interested in seeing what uh, what the top 16 actually shifts out to be. I cannot how many wait. Freezes yeah. they get in, so and so all those deck lists, like we said, is going to be posted on DBS decks. So make sure you guys go check out that website. Fantastic guys, Mark and the team is over there. Uh, they got a deck builder on there, so you can start building the decks. I don't know if they have a little solitaire. They should have like maybe like a test hand thing. That would be really cool. Uh, but you can export the deck directly to Octagon or to Untap, so you can play the game, uh, play the deck right out there. And it's really, really simple and fun to build decks on there. Like I made, I went on there and I spent like two hours just making decks. It was just so easy and fun. But I'm really just starting to just brew things without Mega Frieza, just in the anticipation that this actually does resolve, and I really do hope it does resolve because I, I want to see something different. You know, I, I, we've seen Mega Frieza for almost like. No, three, three months, two months, three months. Longer than that, since December. Like four months, yeah. Since December when regional started. And honestly, I'm the person, I'm the biggest fan of Frieza, too. Like, Mega Frieza. Like, we, we're the one who innovated it. We're the one who brought it to the big scene. And it's just, uh, you know, it's something that got me my first, like, two or three tops. So I was able to, you know, I, I, I love the deck. Honestly, I love what it does, but I feel like now it's gotten out of control. Like, I played the it deck. Out of control. I played the deck now. for two weeks before I got bored of it. Two weeks is what I played that deck, and I was like, all right, this deck is literally chipping away at my soul. Eh, once per turn is still, like, super... I don't know. See, I was playing... We were actually playing some games. Like, me and Justin were playing some games where we would make Micro Freeza once per turn, and I was still getting demolished. And I was like... I'm obviously not playing a terrible deck. He, he's obviously playing this deck. And it's still just, it's just still very powerful at once per turn. It's just, uh, it's just an effect that I, I don't think should be around yet. Like, in any game, you see cheating mana, flexing mana and magic, or, you know, cheating uh, special summons and Yu-Gi-Oh! Cheating resources that normally had the effect of, like, okay, you have to normal summon once per turn and all these rules and bypass it. It's just, it can never be healthy. And the more unhealthy the format, the less people want to play. And that's a problem. Especially with a new blossoming game like this. You can't have formats like this this early on. Because what is that going to say later on down the road? Yeah. You know? Like, I've never played Magic, so I can't speak for it. And that you have. And no, you I love Magic, actually. I've, I've actually almost qualified for a Pro Tour. And we have Pro Tour competitors, and I'm very supportive of them. And I actually play Magic uh, from time to time at the shop. I love it. It's just something that uh, it's not like a game that I'm like, I hate, you know, I love it. It's so good. It's well, we can all agree we all hate Yu-Gi-Oh, It's just a yeah, yeah. We all hate Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, I hate it, and I still, you see, you still see me play it with customers at the shop. Like, I, there's not a game that I would just completely boycott and never play. I just acknowledge your weaknesses and strengths, and I play every card game except for Vanguard. And there's no reason. But you don't have the except I, for Vanguard. Because I know you love Vanguard. I love Vanguard. Or you used to love Vanguard. I I, no, I still love Vanguard. It's just I don't. <laughs> I have to play one game. I can't play two games. Yeah. 
that and Vanguard scene down or like in Florida is I mean, really, I, really difficult. I did play Vanguard at the beginning when they had like OTT and Kagero and I played Kagero and like it was another I think clan or something like that. Kagero, Blasters, and OTT. But and the Royal thing Paladin, was, I think, too, right? I think that was the start. Blasters. But yeah, Royal Paladin. Oh, they were called Blasters. Okay. Um, so the problem with Vanguard is it kind of died off around here. So it's increasing. Like, it's incredibly difficult to find uh, locals to go to. But up in Illinois, I was going to six locals a week. Like, that was crazy. That's big up north. So yeah, one energy right now for Justin. <laughs> One energy. And it seems like it's been forever. We've either been rambling forever or this turn is just taking forever. But there's one energy for Justin. On one energy for Justin. <laughs> there's so many cards on board. This is why I'm saying, like, I, I know I caught a little heat in the chat for saying Marcel should go second. But you want to go second. You don't want to go first. Going first solves nothing in this matchup. Like... Every single time I've gone second, I'm in a way better position than going first. Not only do you have an extra card, but you do have that first attack at the life. And just in seeing exactly how he could finish off the opponent. Like I said, this is not an easy deck. You know? It's a very high ceiling deck. It's very, it's very important that you sequence your cards correctly in this deck, too. One slip up. And it's a very glass cannon ish. You saw it. Um, Justin versus David. I love that you use that phrase. Like glass cannon. Glass cannon. So many people don't know what that means. Yeah, no, glass, glass cannon. Glass it, cannon, glass jaw. It hits hard, but it dies real quick to something. Exactly. So if you rush it, it's just a deck. And that's why I think you see, you're seeing Mass Sane do very well at this event. Uh, two in the top, uh, you know, obviously two at table one, mirror match. And it, it because it takes advantage, it, it, it attacks Mecha just like uh, Vegeta attacked Mecha. And that's where you saw Vegeta actually win um, <laughs> his first event uh, under Marcel Russell because everyone was on Mecha. And he was on Vegeta. And Vegeta is a hard counter to Mecha. So you might be seeing the same thing now, but instead of Vegeta, now you got Mass Saiyan. And you got Overrealm. And Overrealm, has got the, and Overrealm is the best thing Aggro has going for it. We're seeing the combo in now. It's we, we gonna hit a big number here. He's got the Champa. Oh man, if Marcel can't stop this, he's about to be 2 0 Marcel just throwing everything. Like, is that enough? Not enough? Oh, nope. damn it. And he stuck with the bad ring laser. By the way, FTK. FT first turn kill. First turn kill. One, first one energy. turn kill on one energy. First turn kill. Ben, I help. Send help. <laughs> that was Justin's first turn. So, like, when you say this deck isn't consistent, we saw Justin do a two-turn kill, and we saw Justin do a one-turn kill. Don't tell me this deck isn't consistent. Holy this deck cow. is ridiculous. Ridiculous, man. So, like, to anybody who's like, how do you FTK? Right there, you saw it. You One saw energy. it here live. Pro play games. Our players doing it again. Breaking format. And just showing what this deck can actually do in a non-solitaire match against very high-profile players. Because, sure, I can go on Octagon and beat up on some random guys that are playing some, you know, Vegito uh, deck. But you're seeing two high-level players, uh, very big track record, play against each other with a deck that obviously has very high ceiling, very hard to pilot correctly, and playing the same thing against each other. And it was just a complete blowout. I, I don't think Marcel stood a chance, and he had the counterplay cards. He had the super combos. He had the turn one awakenings. He had everything, you know? It's not like he was missing a significant piece or anything like that. It's just in just, you know? I'm telling you, and the problem is you don't need that many pieces to do it. You really don't. And it's why anybody who's like, why go second? Why go second? You just saw. You just saw. You do not go first in this matchup. You don't. If you're playing the mirror, don't go first. No. I learned that real quick. <laughs> I learned that and real you quick. you just saw why. Because it happened to me. And it's a running joke between me and Marcel right now. Um, so the first time I FTK'd him, I saw it. And I was like, can, can I kill you right now? I was like, holy crap. Of course, my kill was actually, I went into the Super Saiyan 4, but you know. <laughs> it was a little bit worse, but at the same time, it's like the joke is I like really go up to Marcel and go. Can, 
can I kill you? And he'll be like, you've been around Scots too long. Like, <laughs> I really want to see that Super Saiyan 4 kill somebody. So hopefully in top oh, four, uh, top 16, we'll be able to see it happen. But that's pretty much the last round of Swiss, guys. Uh, I really hope that you, you saw a little bit of, we, we gave a pretty good variety. I mean, there was a, there was a decent amount of mecha, but we showed Mass Saiyan. We saw what Mass Saiyan could do. We saw that's a huge player, definitely in the game, and I'm really excited to build or, or see different iterations of the builds because I'm not sure. I don't know if they're all on the same, you know, build as uh, Eric, but there's a lot of different ways that you can take that because you saw the structure that I get because we're like green, black, and that actually played really well with the trunks, filling your graveyard, getting a sand. And my baby boy, go tanks. So good. And and then you see the red deck, which gives it a little bit more aggressive take on it. And then you see, you know, other mecha variants. You know, you see the Universe 6 with uh, Mecha, and then you it see... It only took you seven rounds to remember that it's Universe 6. I know. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, proud, I'm, you I'm proud, proud of you, too. I'm proud of you, too. You still uh, can't say Daco, though. But, uh... And I, think, and I think you're still going to see those green variants still in top cut, I believe. David should still be in top cut. Alejandro and Peter did tie, by the way. So... Uh, that Peter, was last round, and yes. there is table one. So, Peter is at table one. Peter was at table one with another Mass Saiyan variant. So, Peter on Mass Saiyan. He is the masked hero that we deserve. Hopefully, he takes it home. The uh, it is. It, it seems like a very... Yeah, His awakened sight like, isn't even masked anymore. Yeah, I know. He's Super I, Saiyan 3 bar.